am a uh, professional motivational speaker. I speak all over the country. I'm also a certified life coach and a business coach as well. I do a lot of uh, speaking, a lot of teaching, a lot of coaching, uh, a lot of couples coaching, if you will. But I tend to focus more on business, a lot more on business, and just helping people look at things from a different perspective than where they are at this point. So, after speaking with Nicole, I, I basically just talked to her a little bit about you guys, and she told me a little bit about you guys, and what I want to talk to you about is a little bit about motivation, I'm going to talk a little bit about motivation, and I'm going to go I'm going to into customer service and sales. Okay. So, what distinguishes leaders from non-leaders is the ability to think beyond themselves and imagine what can be, as long as we strive to be the best and the best that we can, then that's what we will become. In other words, whatever you see in your mind is what you will visualize, right? But I'm going to, show, I'm going to give you a quick technique of how to actually make your dreams, if you will, a reality. A lot of people think that because if we think, I'll give you an example. Beginning of the year, we do we do uh, New Year's resolutions, right? And they look great in here, right? But how many of us actually go through with them? How many of you in here really actually go through your your, your New Year's resolutions? One, two, three, sort of. Well, here's what happens: is that we think about them, and they sound great in our minds, and we may even talk to our friends about them, say, "Hey, you know, this is what I want to do this year." Blah 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 blah. And then like two, three weeks later, it's like back to whatever you have, right? Okay. Here's a very simple, but very powerful technique on how to actually take this, these thoughts, and turn them into reality. And, here, and here's how you do it. A lot of people make it more difficult than what it is. First of all, I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean by that. The chairs you're sitting in. Think about this. Somebody, somebody thought about it. Does that make sense? And then how do you think that became a reality? Come on. Anybody? Yes. Yes. First, it's in their minds. Then, they wrote them down. They did schematics, if you will, on how they're going to be developed. Right? And then they became a reality. Alright? So it's a very simple process, but very powerful at the same time. So whatever, let's say you, you do begin and you, you have this idea of uh, whatever it is that you want to accomplish. Write it down. Once you write it down, it becomes physical. Now you can touch it, you can see it. It's become real. What happens, once you take that thought into a reality, it becomes real your mind begins to think differently. Your mind begins to come up with ideas of how to, what to do, how to, what are the steps going to be to get to that process. It's very simple and very powerful. We don't think that. We think that, well, we think about it and whatever. No, it has to become a reality. And the only way, the only way it's going to become a reality is to take the thought, write it down, now you see it. Now you can believe it. Follow me? As long as it just sits up here, it's there. But it never becomes a reality until you actually take it down and write it down. Once you write it down, your mind begins to think, okay, now this is what I want. For example, I want a new car. I want a new car. Really, I want a new car. But you write down, I want a new car. Your mind starts thinking now. Once you write it down, what kind of car do I want? How am I going to get it? Do I need a second job? You follow me? And your mind just starts, all of a sudden, just starts coming up with ideas on its own. It could be in your dreams, it could be while you're sleeping, it could be a lot of things. But this is the one way, the one very powerful technique to use if you want to accomplish something, you want to do something, take it from a thought to a reality. Write it down. You can see it, you can feel it, and you can make, make, take the process with it. So this is what this really means. If you take it, whatever it is that you want to be, you've got to strive for it, and it will become a reality. What motivates you as an employee? Is it money? Is it doing a great job? Is it talking to people? Is it waking up each morning? I don't like that. 
I mean, how, does that really motivate you? Do you really jump out of bed every morning and think, yeah, yes, I'm going to work now? Not really. Common people, we all have a reason that will motivate us. Okay? Maybe, just maybe you haven't found what it is. To me, I find that money really motivates people. It's a big motivator. Doing a great job is a motivator. Waking up in the morning, so so. So I'll ask some of you guys, what is it that motivates you? Do you know what motivates you? I see you nodding. Yeah, money. Money. Money motivates you. Yeah. Money is a big motivator. It really is. Okay? If that's what you're striving for, for more money, you have to figure out what it is that you're going to do. You first, I always tell people, you've got to find your passion. Find your passion. Whatever your passion is, the money will come. Money's not going to come right away, but if you find your passion, you know what it is, and you just follow through with it. I'll give you an example with me. Um, I hold a master's degree in business administration. I'm almost done with my PhD. But I find that I worked in the corporate world for a very long time, and I worked for the federal government for a while. And I, I just don't like the corporate world. Okay, I found my passion. In, in the corporate world, I used to do go around training and sales, training the sales team, customer service things like that. I, I really enjoyed it. I found that, that was my passion. So I love teaching and helping people. That's one of my things. I really enjoy doing that. I really found that, that was my, my thing. I'm a millionaire. I'm making millions. I was being known right now. But I know that it, it is coming. Okay, I know that because I've planned it out. I've made my th thought process into a reality. I've written all my goals down and, and it's moving along. Okay? A lot of people, when I ask, you, I ask them, you know, what is success to you? What is success? I can ask every single one of you what success is. It's going to, success is going to be different for every single one of you. One can be money, the other can be a good mom, can be a good wife, a good uh, sister, a big sister. You know, everybody's success is going to be different. But the true success, the true meaning of success, guys, is this. Is a, it's a process. It's a process. And you're not going to find this definition anywhere. All right? It's a process. It's, you've got to find your passion. You've got to find your goal. As long as you are continuously, progressively moving towards this goal, as long as you don't stop, it'd be easy if life was from, we could go from A to B. That would be so simple. Wouldn't it? But it's really, if it's life really like that, it goes like this, doesn't it? And here's the thing, though, is that as long as you know what your end result is, you know your goal, it doesn't matter if life is like this, as long as you continuously move with it, towards it, and the minute you feel it, you feel or you see an obstacle coming, you don't stop and give up, you will reach your goal. You will reach it, I, I guarantee you. But if you stop here and you decide to start over or change your mind towards another goal, then you're stuck. You will be stuck. Okay, very, very powerful. Uh, any questions so far? Stop me anywhere and ask me questions. Finding motivation. How do you as an employee uh, find self-motivation? Well, the answer is that you do not. Motivation will find you because you will find the passion, whatever it is, whether it's customer service, whether it's within yourself, whether it's coming to work, talking to people, whatever it is, it will find you. Okay? So believe that you can do it. My perspective is this. As business owners, we're always told to look at our balance sheets and profit and loss statements. Because that is where we can determine the success of our business and discover our problems. Yet, nowhere on either of these sheets do we list employees. Where would we put them? Under assets, liabilities, or both? The most challenging part of running a business is finding and keeping good employees. After talking to Nicole, she told me that she really believes that you guys are really good employees. And she believes that she's, she has a really good staff. I said, okay. I believe her. But she told me so, right? Employees, you guys, are so important in any business. And we cannot do it without you as we haven't found a way to clone ourselves. I'm just kidding. At least not yet. But here's the thing is that... A lot of employers, a lot of owners think that they know a lot, that they know everything, and I'm not saying Nicole doesn't. 
I just find that as I, when I train small businesses or business owners, I find that they think that they know everything, and then they end up failing. And guess what? A lot of the times, their own employees have the answers. If they only take the time to talk to them and ask them for suggestions. A lot of people fail right there. I can tell you, a lot of businesses in, in this area have closed lately because of that. Eight months ago, I actually offered to help him, to help the business go in there and train their customer service. I had gone in there to dinner for a few times and I saw their customer service was not that much apart. I see you uh, smiling. You know what I'm talking about. Okay? It's not... When you have an owner that runs a small business all their lives, for example, Pizza Hut, or a business like that, right? And then you go and open a fine dining restaurant, there is a big spread right there. It's not the same. You know, it's not the same uh, offering you and pouring you a soda as opposed to me coming with a white napkin and opening a, a bottle of wine and doing it properly. There's a big difference. Okay? Big difference. And even though we as owners don't see that, guess who does?